This just in, Jesus is coming back. We are looking forward to a better day. When all pain and crying is taken away. warm welcome to Keswick for Kids. I'm Mel. And I'm Stewie. It's not the normal Keswick this summer, but we're really glad to be able to spend some time with you. Throughout the week, you'll recognise some of your regular leaders from Keswick for Kids. Well, we're going to do lots of things that we normally do at Keswick for Kids, aren't we, Stu? We're going to sing together, we're going to pray, we're going to make some crafts, and most importantly, we're going to hear God speaking from his word. Why don't we pray as we start the week off together? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the chance to meet together for this virtually Keswick Convention. Please help us to learn loads more about Jesus this week. Amen. Amen. Well, our theme for virtually Keswick this year is hope. We've been using the word hope quite a lot this year, haven't we? I guess we've maybe been saying, I hope I can see my friends. Some of you will be thinking, I really hope I can go to the shops. And maybe some of you are really hoping that school will be all back to normal in September. I think there's probably some of you who are hoping you won't have to go to school in September. Well, we'd love to hunt for hope this week. Do you think you could join in with us? Well, if you're hunting for hope, Mel, then I think 
This map is just what you need. Ooh, interesting. Thanks, Stu. I'm going to look at this. Do you think this is going to help me find hope? Well, why don't we sing before we start our hunt? This week, we're going to sing all sorts of songs that you know. Why don't you join in at home? And sometimes there will be actions as well. Hope you've got your singing voices ready. As we hunt for hope this week, we're going to be asking you some questions to find out where you think hope is found. So our big question for today is, what makes a good leader? Somebody who's kind and helpful and they listen to everybody's ideas. To be a good leader, you need to have bravery, wisdom, self-control, and you need to be able to talk with your people. Somebody who is kind. A good leader is someone who's fun and kind, but they're clear and, um, but they, they're helpful and fair. They won't just do what the crowd says because they want to be good. They'll do what is right to be a good leader. Um, someone who is firm but fair. A good leader is someone who is there to help you when you're up sets and tells you to do the right thing. Somebody who um, 
free chocolate and it gives to everybody. Oh, oh, oh. Who are you? And what are you doing at Keswick for Kids? Oh, I'm Hope, Hope Hunter, you know, the world famous explorer. Oh, nice to meet you, Hope. You know what? We're here at Keswick for Kids this week looking for Hope. And um, we could really do with some help. An explorer would be exactly the kind of person we might need to help us. Do you think you could? Oh, yeah, I'd love to help. Oh, well, just before we sign you up, can you tell us a little bit about your qualifications? What kind of things have you discovered? Oh, now, I'm very, very good at discovering where mum and dad hide the secret stash of sweets in the cupboard. And, and when mum loses her car keys, which is a lot of the time, I'm always the one to find them. Hmm, I hope, I'm wondering if you ever found anything outside your own house? Hmm. Oh, there was this one time that I found an old, an old dummy by the slide in the park. Oh dear. Well, you know what? We don't have time to waste, so I really need help. Do you think you could get involved with our team and see how you go with your skills? Yeah, I'd love to help. It'd be great. Okay, well, I think you might need this then. Great, thank you. Oh. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf doesn't wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Oh, hi. Uh, I don't know if we've met. I'm David. You might have heard of me. Songwriter, musician, king of Israel. You might think that being king means I can do whatever I want, but actually, at times, it can be quite hard because I, because of that, I've needed to learn to be really reliant on God and trust what he has to say in his word, the Bible. That's what this song's about. Let me read you another song. It's about a time when everyone around me was against me. Despite all of that, I could still trust and hope in God. Why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers and band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will bash them into pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son or he will be angry and your way will lead to your destruction. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Ah, I've been looking for you. Ah, oh, here I am. You're Hope Hunter, is that right? That's right, I'm Hope Hunter. Very good. And, and, and I've been told that I might be able to help you because you're hunting for something, is that right? Oh, I am. I'm on a quest this week. I'm hunting for hope. I, I get it. Hope Hunter. Ah, uh, there you go. Very good. And, yeah. and where do you think, how, how's it going? Have you found this hope yet? To be honest, it's not going very well so far. I'm not, not really quite sure what I'm after. Well, maybe I can help you. We can maybe narrow it down somewhat. Okay. Yeah, that would be good. I that'll mean, are good. you looking for something which is big, massive? Yeah, that would be easy to find. Um, yeah, maybe, yeah. Or, or is it maybe something really small? Oh, no, yeah, it's definitely really small, I think, maybe. Is it one thing you're looking for? Mm, yeah, it could be, could be, or a few things. I don't, or I many don't know. things. Yeah, maybe. Well, that's quite confusing. You, you don't, you haven't really got far at all. I have no idea. You don't know if it's big. You don't know if it's small. You don't know if it's many. You don't know if it's one. I don't know. Can you help me? Well, possibly. I was thinking that perhaps maybe hope is not found in a thing, mm -hmm. 
But what if the thing you're looking for is actually not a thing? What? What if the thing you're looking for is not a thing, but maybe a person? Hmm. Maybe you're looking for a person. A person? Hmm. Maybe hope is a person. But if hope is a person, then what kind of person? Like, is it, is it a really strong person? Could or, be. Or uh, maybe a really smart, clever person? Could be. Or a maybe stylish person? Or a very rich person, all the money? Or maybe it's all of those things in one person? Possibly. I'll tell you what, I can help you. Okay. Because this week in Keswick, we are looking at the book of Psalms. Mm -hmm. And I think if you started out in Psalm 1 and 2, you may find the person you're looking for. Mm. Hmm. You want to give that a go? I will give it a try. See if you can find Psalm 1 and 2 and give it a read. Why don't you join me as we pray and ask God to help us to understand the Bible. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the Bible. We thank you that it is your word to us. We pray now that by your Holy Spirit, you would teach us more about Jesus, for we pray this in his name. Amen. We've just been hearing about David, who wrote these psalms. Uh, he wrote two psalms, and uh, as he wrote these psalms, he knew that there are many different kinds of rulers in the world. Uh, rulers come and rulers go. Sometimes good rulers replace bad rulers, and sometimes bad rulers replace good rulers. He also knew that God is actually the ruler of all rulers. He rules the whole world. He doesn't just rule one country, but the whole world. And he looked around him and he noticed that there were some human rulers who didn't like the idea that God would rule over them. They wanted to be the ones in charge. And so they gathered together and they made plans. They made plans to get rid of God. They made plans to get rid of God's rules. They didn't want to live under his rule. And that's what it says there in Psalm chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. He says, why do the nations conspire? That means, why do they make plans? And why do the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break off their chains, let us throw off their shackles. You see, they feel that God was trying to stop them from having fun. They felt that his laws and the ways that he wants us to live are like chains that were binding them. And all they wanted to do was to be free. And so they tried to get rid of God. Do you think that's a good idea? Do you think it's a good idea if we allow people just to do anything they want? Do you think that would be a good world to live in if everybody did absolutely as they pleased? I don't. I think that would be absolute chaos. Listen to what he says in verse 4. He says, the one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. 
So here you have human kings who've been created by God who are trying to get rid of God. Just think about how silly that is. They are humans. God is not a human. You can't fight against God with a sword or a bow. God is not someone who is here on earth. He is in heaven. God is someone who is eternal and all-powerful. How is it possible for people who live on earth, who are only people who live and then die, to fight against God? And not only are they fighting against God in this psalm, they're fighting against the king that God has chosen. And so he says in verse 6, he says, I have installed my king. He says, on Zion, my holy hill. What God is really saying is, I have made my decision about who will rule the world. I'm not asking you to like the idea. I'm not asking you to vote for who will be king. I have already installed him on his throne. And he is a powerful king. He's a powerful king who will smash to pieces anyone who comes against him. We see that in verse 9. He speaks of this king and he says, You will break them with an iron rod, which is like a scepter that a king would use. Or you will dash them to pieces just like pottery. So he's a very powerful king. He's the kind of king you don't want to mess with. He's enormously powerful. But he is also a kind king. He's the kind king who promises to protect all those who honor him as king. Those who come to him for protection. You see, in verse 12, it speaks of kissing the son. Well, that just means to show honor and to show respect, to honor him as the king. And it speaks about those being able to take refuge in him. Refuge is a word that means safety. Uh, when there's danger outside and you go somewhere safe to hide, to, to be kept safe, that means a refuge. So this powerful king is a powerful king, but he is also a great refuge. I wonder what you do when you feel scared. Do you go to your little brother or your little sister for help? Or do you rather seek out an adult? Do you find perhaps one of your parents or a guardian to look after you? Of course you do. You go to the one who is powerful enough to help you, powerful enough to protect you. And that is the wonderful king that we see here in Psalm 2. He is a powerful king, but he's a powerful king who protects. And if you haven't worked it out already, actually the psalmist is looking forward to Jesus. Jesus is this wonderful king. He is a powerful king. He will destroy all those who come against him. But he is also powerful to protect. He's able to protect all those who come to him. And he's also the king who died. He died to take the punishment for the times when we have not lived the way that God wants us to live. For when we have been like these kings, saying, I don't want your rules. I don't want to obey you in any way. I want to rule my own life. And Jesus is the king who came to die and take the punishment that we deserve for that rebellion. What a wonderful king. And as we come to this wonderful king, like going to a parent for help when we're scared, parents have rules too, don't they? They expect us to live in a certain way when we live in their homes. Well, in the same way, this king, who is happy to help us and happy to protect us, tells us how he wants us to live. And the book of Psalms really speaks about how God wants us to live. And David says that the way that God wants us to live is a great joy. It's not a burden. It's not like having chains bound around you. It's a great joy. In fact, in Psalm 2, he says it is an absolute delight to spend time in God's word. It's wonderful to hear God speak. In fact, when I think about God's word, I think about a day and night. I think about God and how wonderful he is. Boys and girls, in the crazy world in which we're living with many dangerous things going on, there is hope. There is hope because Jesus reigns. Jesus is the powerful king and we can run to him. And I want to ask you today, would you run to him? Would you take refuge? Would you take shelter in this wonderful king? And would you enjoy being, being part of his kingdom? And would you invite other people to come and be part of his kingdom? Would you invite other people to come and take refuge in this king, that they would honor him as king? and seek to obey him as king. Let me invite you to do that now if you've never done it before. Why don't you take a moment on your own to read Psalm 1 and Psalm 2 and think about how you think about Jesus and whether you need to come to him and honour him as the king. Hello, let me introduce you to Hannah. Hi guys, and let me introduce you to Sam. We're, We're the, the Gillespies. Gillespies. 
we're going to be praying every day in response to God's word. And me and Hannah are going to be helping you to pray to God. Excellent. Let's do that now. Today, we're going to be praying um, to God about how Jesus is his son and his king. Um, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for making your son Jesus king of the world. We praise you that Jesus is a king who is powerful enough to destroy his enemies and protect his people. Thank you that Jesus died so that we can find refuge in him. We pray that we would accept Jesus as our king and live our lives for him. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to ask God for help as we and other people tell others about Jesus. Father, we love Jesus and pray that you would help us to tell people about him. We pray that our friends and family who don't know Jesus would accept him as their king and find protection in him. Thank you for missionaries who are telling people all around the world about King Jesus. Please would you keep reminding them that Jesus is already reigning as king, even when it doesn't feel like it. Amen. Amen. Rory, thank you so much for your talk. It was really helpful. You've been a really good help at the start of my quest to find hope. You've shown me all about how hope isn't a thing after all. Hope is a person that I'm looking for. But there is just one question that I have, Rory. What if my friends don't want to have King Jesus as their king? That's a good question. And I think the great thing about Psalm 1 and Psalm 2 is it's telling us that actually Jesus is already the king. It's not that we're wanting people to vote for him to be king. He is already the king. And so when I speak to my friends about Jesus, I'm not really trying to convince them as much that Jesus is the king because he is the king. I'm trying to convince them that he is a lovely king, a wonderful king, the kind of king that we would love to serve. That serving him and, and living the way he wants us to live is the best way to live. So that's what I'm trying to do. By the way that I speak, uh, the way that I behave around them, the way that I talk to them, I'm trying to show them that by living for King Jesus is the best way to live. And I think he's a great king because he's a powerful king. And he's a king who loves and who protects. And I want to invite all my friends and family to know this king. Absolutely. Boys and girls, today we're going to be making a scepter. Rory has been telling us about a king that rules with a scepter and the scepter shows his power. Let me show you how. You can print these from the website. It's the templates. This part is the gem and this is the one we're going to be starting with. The first job is to warm up your hands, grab your paper, a pair of scissors and then cut out all along the solid lines. When you've done that, you will see there's lots of little dotted lines. What you need to do is fold all around those little triangles, all the little ones everywhere. Now the fun starts. You need to grab some colors, colored pencils, crayons, whatever you'd like to use, and do a lot of decoration on your gem. You can see I've started here, and I got so excited, I even went and rustled through my hobby box and got some beautiful gems. You could even put glitter on, because this is the beautiful big part of your scepter and jewel that's going to look amazing. Right, when you've done that, the tricky part starts. So look carefully. I've colored these triangles in blue to show you that that's the place where you need to apply the glue. Glue like this would be perfect. Then when you've glued all the bits, you quickly stick it together like that. Okay, you don't want the glue to dry. So you need to do it carefully like that. And as you shape it all around, you'll see the shape of the gem all comes together a little bit like this. Now, the next part is to grab a pair of scissors and chop off the top little bits so that, and here's the trick, you can pop your finger in to get this octagon stuck on really neatly. You, you get some glue and start putting the octagon all around the edges. When you've got about three or four triangles stuck on, you can put your finger through and get the last few done. Ooh. Here's a nice glitzy one to show you. So you can carry on gluing it all in place. Then you need to leave it for a minute or two to get dry. While it gets dry, you're onto the sticky part. 
And when I say sticky, I don't mean the glue. You need to get the sticky part of your scepter, decorate some of it, not all of it. And you don't want to put too much glitter here because your hands are going to be swooshing around there. Then you roll it up from the boring side. And when it gets to the exciting decorated part, you can get an adult or a brother or sister to help you pop a bit of glue there, roll it closed. You even got the memory verse there. And then you can choose, maybe use PVA glue, maybe runny glue, prits, maybe even sticky tape to stick the scepter onto the jewel, onto the handle. And then you will end up with something like this. Uh, you can, as you can see, decide to decorate it with a bit more glitz afterwards, maybe dip it in some glitter, or you can even print it in colored paper so that it can look really beautiful and sturdy. Hello, my name's Catherine. Hey, I'm Catherine too. Oh, well, that's going to make it easier for you to remember this week. Well, we're part of the Keswick for Kids team. And one way which helps us to love Jesus more is by learning parts of God's word. And it's something that we enjoy doing at Keswick for Kids too. This week, we are going to be learning a verse from the Bible that summarises all that we've been taught at Hope Hunters. We are hoping to add a little bit more each day. So by the end, you're going to be able to remember it all. Remember it all? Oh gosh, I hope it's not a long verse. It's not really long, so don't worry. It's exciting, isn't it, that we're going to be learning from Psalms this week. We are going to learn Psalm 5 verse 11. And we've got some signs to go with it too, to help us. Okay. So today's section is this. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. So we say it through together? Yeah, let's have Maybe a go. Maybe you at home could have a go with joining in the signs too. But, but let all, all who take, take refuge in you be glad. glad. How are you getting on with it, Catherine? Mm. Do you think maybe you and the children at home need to have a go together? Sure. Why don't you join in with me? Let's have a go together. Are you ready? But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Fabulous. Why don't you have a go at practising this every time you wash your hands today? Oh, that's a great idea. We've been washing yeah. our hands a lot recently. 20 seconds. Say this through six times and that'll be about right. Hold on a minute. Did you say that we're going to be adding more? Yeah. Oh. Don't panic. It's OK. I know that you're going to get on really well. OK. Let's say it through again from the beginning before we go today. But let all who take, take refuge in you be glad. That's almost everything today at Hope Hunters. We found out more about where hope is found from Psalm 1 and 2. And we hope you have fun making your craft, the scepter. Don't forget to practice the actions for our special verse from the Bible. Thanks so much for being with us and we really hope you join us next time. Let's finish off our session today with a song. Jesus is the King, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one. Promise one, the Son of God, Jesus is the Lord. He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus, He is the King. He is the King. He commanded the fishermen, hey, come follow me. And they did, and they did, and they did. Jesus
God, Jesus is the Lord. He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus, He is the Jesus, is the King, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one, promised one, the Son of God. Jesus is the Lord. He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus, He is the King. Taken away. No more sin or darkness. Every wrong made right. Jesus Christ is coming and He is the light. He's coming back again because He promised to. See our King. 